NVIDIA's new GPUs already? If you wanted to buy an EV, it's about to get cheaper. And AMD's new CPUs already? Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news that I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast. And today's top story is us discussing the fact that according to some reports, NVIDIA is getting ready to launch their GPUs in less than a month. We're expecting an announcement of the RTX 40 series card sometime in August. This is coming out by a report that video card suppliers in China are expecting to get their first delivery of RTX 40 series next month. So this is actually really soon. It moves up the timeline that we were expecting by at least a month. We were expecting that these GPUs were gonna have to start mass production in August. Not that it was gonna make its way into suppliers' hands so quickly in August. And now you could take this with a grain of salt. You could think, hey, this is just one source talking about the RTX 40 series and how it's actually making its way into companies' hands. And that, uh, you know, it could be, it could be fake, but, to substantiate that just a little bit further, there is an announcement by NVIDIA yesterday that they are going to be having a special address at SIGGRAPH with CEO Jensen Wong on August 9th. So this was not mentioned until recently with NVIDIA having their special address during that time between 9 a.m. and 10 a.m. on August 9th. One of the things to highlight here is the fact that the main theme is going to be illuminating the future of graphics. Now this could potentially not be for the mainstream gaming cards. This could potentially be for like their next gen compute cards, things that are supposed to go in data centers and servers and all of that kind of stuff. But I will remind you that AMD has launched gaming products at SIGGRAPH before, all the way back in 2017. RX Vega made its debut at SIGGRAPH. So expecting that Nvidia would actually launch a gaming GPU at SIGGRAPH isn't particularly unfounded. You tie that together with the other reports that GPUs are making their ways to suppliers and I just like I don't know what's going on okay why there's so much Nvidia was gonna release them really early like in September and then the reports came out that there was too many in stock so they're actually gonna delay it until like December or November but now it's like it's happening now which I, are you ready for new GPUs? Is anybody? I don't know if it's a good time now. Would you buy what's RTX 4090? I guess people who are at like the top purchasing pile in that upper echelon aren't necessarily making the same consumer-based financial decisions as people who are looking to get something like an RTX 3050 or RTX 3060, where you're expecting that to last you a little bit. If you're on the bleeding edge, well, you're just gonna keep bleeding because you constantly have to cut yourself a little bit more open in order to let the vein, blood, life force of capitalism into you. Let me know, you are gonna do a capitalism with the RTX 40 series if it comes out in August? I wanna hear from you in the comments. And I also want you to hear about today's video sponsor. Today's episode of Hot News is brought to you by Grid. My friends, do you ever want to own a piece of tech history, but feel like the best parts of what you've owned have passed you by? Well, Grid is here to actually make it so that you can immortalize and memorialize some of the most beautiful moments in tech in a really gorgeous way, making for great gifts or even just for your personal collection. Grid has frames for a lot of the coolest tech products that have come out over the last little bit, including being the ultimate nostalgia for Apple fans. Currently here, I have the Grid 4 and the Grid 4S, which are beautiful displays of some of Apple's most popular turning point products in their history. They also have various game consoles and other smartphone devices that you could potentially have in their grid frames. And not only are they gorgeous, but they're also great for the environment too, since instead of these devices ending up in landfills, they can be repurposed in works of art. Reduce, reuse, recycle, my friends. And as we get further from the launch of these devices, we get further from our ability to commemorate them because they eventually disappear. So having one of these grid frames will allow you to have a piece of tech memory mortalized on your wall for a good period of time. And if you use our link in the video description, gridstudio.cc forward slash UFD and enter code UFD15 when you're checking out, you can get a 15% discount on your purchase with them. My friends, you can get great displays, 
They make for great gifts. We're actually gonna be giving these away at some charity auctions for Syngap Research Fund. So big thanks to Grid for providing it for that. But you can also make sure that it looks great on your wall at home. Again, go to the link in the video description, use code UFD15 to save 15% and get some pieces of tech history, my friends. But Nvidia is not the only company launching a GPU in August. We talked about in many episodes of Hot News Ago, there was a company that debuted some new GPUs this year, InnoSilicon coming out with their Fantasy One GPUs. Well, now they're ready to unveil their Fantasy Two GPUs on August 3rd. Not a whole lot to really expect from this. It's not gonna make its way on over to the Western markets. This is likely gonna be just tied up in China, but it's it's happening. More GPUs being unveiled. But Intel is actually unsupporting a lot of their GPUs. We're hotly anticipating them to actually officially launch their Arc Alchemist GPUs to most of the world, but it turns out that they're actually removing day zero game GPU driver support for a whole host of their GPUs that are found in some of their CPUs. So if you go from sixth gen to 10th gen, or essentially the entire Skylake generation, Intel will no longer be providing day zero updates when it comes to video games on those graphics chips. You have to be on Rocket Lake or 11th gen or newer in order to get all of these driver updates for day zero. That does not to say you won't get driver updates for the sixth through 10th gen chips. It's just that they will be delayed and you won't be able to get them as quickly. But AMD's drivers appear to be getting better and better. With the latest adrenaline drivers, there are now reports coming out that an RX 580 can actually get double the performance in my Minecraft because of the OpenGL improvements that have been made to the graphics card. Previously to this driver, the RX 580 reportedly got an average FPS 302, but now with the latest driver, it's averaging 547, which is an 81% increase, which is quite good. But it is not just the OpenGL boost that we're expecting from this. It also has the new features like the AI noise suppression that we talked about in previous episodes of Hot News from AMD. And while AMD is giving you more value, you, Meta or Facebook is going to give you less value with the Quest 2 because it was announced that they're going to increase the price by $100. The base model is now going to start at $399. The 256 model is going to be at $499, but they all include a copy of Beat Saber until 2023 in case that matters to you to help offset the 20 bucks that that game is. So this is, this is not necessarily good news. It's kind of confusing. Meta has announced that it has lost a several billion dollars to their metaverse development. They reported their first revenue decrease, I think ever, and then now they're raising their prices on something that was arguably really hard to justify the money on for what is essentially, for most people, a Beat Saber device or a device that's gonna collect dust on your shelf. I don't know, I don't like the price increase. It's been out for like two years. That's like the weirdest part about this. It's not like this is early in the product's life cycle. Like I think I would be expecting them to come out with a Quest 3 at this point if they were following a normal hardware cadence, but instead they're just gonna raise the prices on everybody. But Spotify realizing they don't wanna be in the hardware game, so they're gonna stop production on the car thing, which in case you don't know what that is, I don't either. It, really, it was like a hundred dollar accessory for your car. I guess this is for cars that previously didn't have CarPlay, Android Auto, that kind of stuff. The vast majority of cars on the road, but it it was, it's a hundred dollars. It's expensive and it only integrates with Spotify. It's not like it gives you a fully functional wireless CarPlay setup. Kyler really wants one. I got a coupon code where like it was $50 off and then I got an additional 10% making it $45, which like makes it a little bit better, but still a very tough pill to swallow. But now I want you to swallow the pill of crypto stonks. Let's get on into the crypto pricing. Bitcoin is up quite a bit today to be at $23,862, up 5% on the day. Ethereum having a large day, up 9% to be at $1736. Six, and Dogecoin also having a pretty decent day to be up 6.6% .6 to 6.9 cents. Nice, I guess. Likely this is tied to the Fed announcing that they have some written interest rates hikes that are going up, but it wasn't as severe as some people were expecting. I don't know, but what severe is the discounts you're gonna get on UFD deals? Thanks to Reese coming in with the hottest tech deals out on the internet. Hey friends, Reese here bringing you the hottest tech deals out on the internet. Today we're starting off strong with another Ryzen deal with the AMD Ryzen 5 5600G, a six core 12 thread CPU running at 4.2 
1.4 gigahertz going for only $147.10, which is 43% off. Next up, we have the NZXT Air P, which is a static pressure fans going for only $599 each, which might mean this is a good time to stock up on them. Last up, we have the Samsung 870 Evo SSD. The one terabyte version is going for $99.99, which is $50 off currently. Friends, don't let friends buy hard drives in 2022. For all today's deals and more, you can check the link in the video description. Cheers. And here's a tech deal that's not going to appear in UFD deals because it just doesn't work that way. The United States Senate passing the Inflation Reduction Act still has to go through the House, still has to be signed by the president, but it does include new tax credits for electric vehicles for essentially a lot of the electric vehicle makers that reside in the United States right now. So it's gonna provide up to $7,500 in tax credits for SUVs that are priced below 80 grand and cars below $55,000. And then there's also going to be a tax credit on used electric vehicles if they're below the same price point. There is an income ceiling for this, so if you're earning more than $150,000 per year or couples earning less than $300,000 per year, you won't qualify for this. Uh, for the new tax credit, for the used tax credit, that's up to $75,000 per person or $150,000 conjoined. But one of the key things is that this is not possibly going to be a tax credit that happens when you file your taxes at the end of the year and it lowers your tax liability by $7,500, but rather it will happen at the point of purchase so the vehicle will actually effectively cost you that much less when you purchase it. This is going to apply to only electric vehicles that are built in North America, so the ones in the United States, in Mexico, in Canada. A lot of the major EV manufacturers either build or assemble their vehicles in Mexico as well as Canada in addition to the United States, so you have to make it on this continent in order to qualify for that, but the manufacturer caps are eliminated, so this brings back Toyota and Tesla getting these EV tax credits. This applies to all the vehicles that will be purchased from January 1st of next year onward. And then on top of that, it's going to last for a decade until December 31st, 2032. So this should potentially boost the EV industry, at least in the United States, by allowing the vehicles to become cheaper. I think one of the things that I really appreciate about this is the fact that there are price caps on the specified vehicles in order for them to qualify for this tax credit so that the EV manufacturers won't boost their price points up significantly and then allow it so that the $7,500 brings it back down to where it is now because in some of the cases it would put it over that $80,000 mark, but it makes it so that the ultra luxury ones like the Model S Plaid or things like the Lucid Air don't qualify for this, which makes sense because the people who can afford those types of vehicles don't necessarily need the tax incentive in order to purchase them. But somebody who's looking at a thing like a used Kia Nero versus a similarly spec small SUV can decide, hey, I'll get $4,000 off on this Nero. That might make it more or worth it for me to switch over to EV. It seems to be a pretty decent plan overall when it comes to trying to incentivize EV adoption. I won't comment on taxpayer money and all of that stuff, whether or not it's worth it for that particular purpose. But for EV adoption, I actually really like this bill. And people really did not like the new Instagram update. I'm not really on Instagram, so I did not see it, but they rolled out a new feed that was more like TikTok. It took up the full screen of what you were doing and you had to swipe up from post to post. A lot of people hated it. I think I didn't see any single positive comment about the new setup. And so just within a few days, Instagram has now rolled it back saying for the new feed designs, people are frustrated in the usage data isn't great. So there, I think that we need to take a big step back, regroup and figure out how we want to move forward. Additionally, saying that the full screen design was not yet good and needed more work before Instagram rolled it out to everyone. It does appear like that's being scaled back, but it does seem like Instagram has lost its way. Meta as a business doesn't seem to have a good handle on what's going on. Instagram, instead of trying to double down on its strengths, has simply tried to adapt and adopt exactly what's working for somebody else and thereby losing its identity. But another thing that people didn't like was the fact that the PlayStation 5, unlike the Xbox Series X, did not have 1440p support, but now it has officially, unofficially gotten that in a beta software update with 1440p support. The only caveat here is that it does not support variable refresh rate that will only apply on 1080p and 4K output rather than the 1440p. Sony not really addressing why, but it's at least something in case you wanted to play 
your PS5 on a 1440p monitor, it's now going to be likely. And what is, according to some people, likely the launch of the Ryzen 7000 series CPUs. Actually, according to AMD, it's kind of likely. So AMD announcing that they will have a Meet the Experts event next week on August 5th to discuss their X670E motherboards. But one of the things that appears in this Meet the Experts setup is that it's supposed to be supporting the recent launch of AMD Ryzen 7000 series processors, which as of right now have not been launched. August 5th is on Friday, so it stands to reason if there was a recent launch for this, it would happen sometime during the week next week, or this could just be a typo by AMD, but we could potentially be getting new GPUs and new CPUs very soon. But we also got some new details on the names of the CPUs that AMD is gonna be launching. The Ryzen 7000 series got the 7600X, the 7700X, not a 7800X, and then the 7900X and 7950X. No low end, especially because AMD recently launched new low end chips like the Ryzen 3 4100. So these are interesting new CPUs from AMD, new GPUs from Nvidia, potentially sometime in early August. Let me know what you're most excited for on that front, and I will let you know that I'm most excited to finish this episode of Hot News, because it's over, it's done. I'm done with the tech news today. I hope you have a swell weekend. I'll see you back here on Monday for more tech news.